has things in you know, seniority by genetics. It's because your brother's on the job already. Oh. All right. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do is, please, when you touch this thing, don't get too, you know, grabby with it. Let's try to keep the lung tissue itself intact. So when I go ahead and inflate it, hopefully it just, it, it, you'll be able to see the lung capacity. The two that we have on the other table, I'll let you guys kind of mess with them in a little while. Uh, but first of all, let's just go ahead and start talking a little bit of anatomy. So, starting from the top, this piece right here, I'm holding, you okay? You grossed out already? What is this that I'm holding right now? Trachea. This is part of the trachea, though, right here. The entire thing. When you grab this, I want you to realize that this does not collapse. Notice how I'm putting a little, a little bit of pressure. This is where the vocal cords would be, in here where my finger is. The epiglottis is right above it. I don't really can't tell if this has an epiglottis or if it was taken out also. If you guys can see, this entire thing was taken out all together. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it around the back so you guys can see. Where the heart was along, uh, attached to the back. What you're seeing right now, this is part of the aorta. So just so you guys can see how large and thick of a vessel that is. Look at it right here. Later on, when you find it on the other two, stick your finger. If you find something that bites, pull back. <laughs> but this is the aorta down here, uh, back here. If you notice, everything is now backwards, and you can see how the lobes are also divided. So we have one here, and you can see that all of this tissue, eventually, as it feels, it's just going to be a bunch of alveoli, which we'll hopefully in a few minutes we'll see how it just expands. Some of it, I'm gonna put enough pressure that some of it is, is probably going to start bursting or leaking. When that happens, don't freak out. Just kind of stay away because it may actually you know, squirt out a little bit. <laughs> Just so you guys can understand. Are we in the splash zone? Yeah. <laughs> this thing right here, anybody know what that is? Clot? It's a blood clot. Oh. So, what I want to make sure you guys understand is, as you get through here, I want you to go ahead and just gently place your hand over the lungs. Try not to put too much pressure. I want you to feel the trachea itself. The trachea has some rings, it's cartilage, that prevents it from collapsing at the same time. This pipe down here attached to it is what? Esophagus. That's the esophagus. So notice how it's soft. And if I wanted to, I can get my finger into the esophagus from that location. Okay? So you should be able to put your fingers in, feel the trachea, find the esophagus. Obviously, this will lead to the stomach. Notice how it's already been uh, taken out. Anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put a tube in here. Uh, this is an ET tube, endotracheal tube. If you notice, it has one cuff at the end, kind of like the uh, the uh, the other tube that we showed you before, right? What was it called? Oh. Combi tube, cool. Um, I really can't, I can't show you right now because uh, I don't have a laryngoscope, but you, this part, this device has to go past the vocal cords until this black light, this black line is distal to it. So as you insert, you inflate the cuff. In this case, since it's a pig trach, is quite large. You saw how it bulges out here. And now, we're gonna grab this BVM, by the way, style that comes out. We'll see if we can get some ventilation onto this lens. What you're seeing is the lung capacity. As I ventilate, notice how some of the top part eventually... Did you feel that pressure back? When you hear this device making that noise of like snoring, Zen, are you paying attention or are you Snapchatting, buddy? Oh, I'm getting all of this. Don't I'm sure you are. Don't put, you chill on the phone, please. Yeah. All right, guys, notice how when I ventilate, I can still push some of that air out. Now, Is it because it's uncomfortable? It's yeah, you can almost hear it like breathing right yeah. through. Is this like how when someone's doing CPR and you have the tube inserted, you can do the ventilation separate Correct. Once every, once every you know, five, six to eight seconds would be something like that's one, two, three, four, five, six. The CPR may still be going on at the same time. Now, remember, I'm going to leave this tube in for a second. I want to make sure you guys all kind of like get the hang of it. Mm -hmm. Do not. Okay, when you ventilate these, this one and the two in the back, the two in the back have already been cut open and stuff, so you're gonna notice that uh, they're gonna be really, uh, they may actually squirt out a little bit, so don't ventilate too hard on those, because you may get some of this juice on you. So, this, let me see if I can actually get the lower part too. 
There we go. Now, um, let me see if I can go ahead and rotate. What did you press there to make it? I hear that there's air escaping from the bottom. I'm trying to occlude that flow of air to see if I can get some more okay. of the lower lobes to expand. It should expand a bit more, right? Yes. When was this pig slide? Probably today. Wow. Oh. I wonder if so. That's like guess you're a vegetarian. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anybody who's a veggie, vegetarian now, you probably. Julius is anatomy and physiology, by the way. Let's go ahead and take a look at the back of it. Notice the tissue color also changes. See how it gets nice and pink? It's like a dinosaur. I don't see that. It's making noise. It's alive. <laughs> okay. So, what I want you guys to do is feel for the trachea, the esophagus, the voice box itself. Now, actually, the one thing I forgot to show you real quick is a cricothorotomy. This is a voice box. Right here. Like right there. Mm -hmm. You guys noticed the uh, trachea just kind of got a little deflated in that case. Mm -hmm. The tube is now out. I'm going to go ahead and go back to anatomical position. Right now, we're looking at the back of it. Mm -hmm. Now, hold it up, please. So, for a cricothorotomy, the tissue that, that, that they're looking for is called, on a second. it's always a little difficult on, on some of these because although it's very, it resembles the human tissue, I'm going to cut some of this stuff out. Obviously, I'm not a surgeon and I'm just a, a medic, but I've seen this on TV. <laughs> Once or twice. I'm trying to expose some of this tissue so you guys can see exactly what we're looking for. What we're looking for here is a cricothyroid cartilage. For those of you guys, if you want to, if your hands are clean, you can actually feel your Adam's apple. You will find a, uh, a small spot, which is what I'm trying to look for right now, uh, where the cricoid and thyroid cartilage meet. It will have a hole in between where we can insert a tube. Usually a size 6'2", which is, or 6 and a half, which is that one right there. Don't be so quiet. You can put some background music if you want, Zender. Tell me how I can't breathe in now. Yeah, so this, so this is... So Even you had a species, bad day. We'll take a look cartilage. around. Yes. They had the Adam's apple kind of guy. Uh, yes. When we of, when we practice on these, yeah. when we practice on these, uh, we also look for the similar tissue. Uh, it's very comparable to a human. For for humans, though, the, it would be like more. It would be closer to the skin, right? You would have to cut through okay. so much. Or no, it's a little bit easier.